The Pixel 6 Pro. Many reviewers online will talk about software, and to be honest, that is what Google is good at, but only a few reviewers will talk about how phones are built and what they're made of. That's where I come in. Today we'll be assessing the durability and structural integrity of the Pixel 6 Pro, Google's latest flagship smartphone. Should be interesting. Let's get started. Right off the bat, the biggest visual distinction between this and other smartphones is the massive Geordi-esque Star Trek style visor on the back, with a huge old protrusion lengthwise across the entire surface. For Americans, the raised lip is a little thicker than a quarter, about the same thickness as an SD card, or very similar in thickness to a strand of spaghetti. For everyone else in the world, it's two and a half millimeters. I've mentioned previously that I feel like smartphones internally are mostly the same these days, and that remains true for the Pixel 6 Pro as well, with a few caveats. Google's software is what makes this phone different. It's live captions, live transcribe, and live language translation features are mind-bogglingly good. Plus, you know how you feel like your phone's always listening and giving ads for stuff you only mention verbally to friends? Well, now Google has managed to turn that creepiness into a marketing bullet point with something called Now Playing, which turns on your phone's microphones all day and identifies songs for you that are playing nearby. Who needs conspiracy theories when reality is right here? Enough with the software though, let's get back to the hardware. The nice thing about the camera bridge across the whole back panel is that there is zero rocking when it's laid flat. I like that. Plastic is a level two or three, glass is a five or six, and sapphire is a level eight or nine. The Pixel 6 Pro starts seeing scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. Google is using Gorilla Glass Victus for the display, which means that the 11.1 .1 megapixel front-facing hole-punch camera is also protected from scratches. The earpiece slit up top is super thin, without any grills to fall out or get dirty. If you remember last year, the Pixel 5 was made with some strange plastic-coated metal stuff, but this year we get solid metal, at least on this side. We have metal volume rockers and a metal power button. Surprisingly though, the top edge of the phone is 100% plastic across the entire edge. This is something we've never seen before. Usually all the sides on a smartphone are made from the same material. I imagine that this plastic might have something to do with the 5G antenna location, but we won't know for sure until we take it apart. Along the left side, Google switches back to metal including the IP67 SIM card tray, which has room for a single SIM card. No expandable memory. The bottom edge of the phone is also back to metal, with its USB-C port and pretty big slots for the loudspeaker and lower microphone. Three of the four sides are made from metal, and one side is made from plastic. We'll see if that affects the structure later on. The back of the phone is made with glass. This is the stormy black color, with two slightly different shades of gray on either sides of the camera ridge. The cameras, starting with a 50 megapixel main camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 48 megapixel four times telephoto lens, along with the laser autofocus and dual LED flash are all protected under a layer of glass. The sides of the camera hump though are made with a scratchable plastic. Fun fact, did you know that there are one million billion ants alive on earth right now? I'm not sure whose job it is to count them all. Nobody mentioned ant counting during career day at my high school, but that is a lot of ants. The Pixel 6 Pro has a 6.7 inch 1440p 120 hertz display, and some phones survived the burn test with no damage, but the Pixels pixels on the Pixel 6 Pro go lava red and then black after only about 15 seconds, and stay that way which just solidifies even further our resounding agreement that the burn test remains inconsequential. We'll keep doing it though, just to make sure. Before the bin test, our Pixel 6 Pro does have an underscreen optical fingerprint reader. It's rather quick on the setup, and once my fingerprint is registered, we can add some spaghetti, I mean level seven deeper grooves, and see if the scanner can still read my fingerprint through the heavily scratched glass. It got things right the majority of the time, even with the damage, which is good. Underscreen fingerprint readers, though, are still just not my favorite. 
One thing I am nervous about though is the large camera bump that's basically separating the phone into two halves. It might make the perfect creasing point for the phone to just snap in half during the bin test. Starting the bin from the back though, we do get the smallest of flexes, and flipping it around to the front we get basically the same result. The Pixel 6 Pro doesn't seem very structurally affected by that large cross panel camera bump. The build is solid, with no cracks, bends, or kinks. It did get burned easier than most smartphones, and has the weird plastic rail up top, but other than that, I'd say the Pixel 6 Pro is a solid phone and passes my durability test. As a fun little bonus, here's a sneak peek of the insides with my teardown skin from dbrand. There are a lot of good looking phones internally this year. Plus, with a grip case, it flushes out the surface of that camera ridge perfectly. It makes the whole phone look like a cybernetic masterpiece. I'll show you more of the insides during the teardown video, but until then, you can grab a teardown skin for your own device with the link down in the description. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.